Hi, I'm Vince Giordano, Executive Director of the New Jersey Education Association. NJEA is committed to celebrating excellence in education. That's why we're proud to support Teacher Appreciation Week, a special series produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation celebrating New Jersey's talented and dedicated teachers. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, working for great public schools for every child. Wells Fargo, the Adler Aphasia Center, PSE&G, committed to improving New Jersey's economy and strengthening its communities. The law firm of Gibbons PC, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, making healthcare work. And by Bloomfield College, offering small classes and big opportunities since 1868. Promotional support provided by The Star Ledger and NJ.com and by NJ Biz. This is One on One. When you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? People like laughing at others, so I don't mind if the other is me. You see, you go right into the character. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm bringing families together a half an hour each week. I mean, I'm doing something special. And so I do feel successful. There he is, Peter Horn, Project 79 coordinator, Westfield High School. Good to see you, Peter. Great to be here, Steve. This is part of our classroom close-up series we're doing in cooperation with our partners at the New Jersey Education Association, uh, featuring teachers who are making a huge difference. Uh, Got to ask you, Project 79 is, we're about to see a video from the classroom close-up series in just a second. What is Project 79? Well, it's named for the year that it was founded. Um, that's what the 79 stands for. And we've been around uh, for as long as we have because we take care of a population of students within Westfield High School uh, who are of a average to above average academic ability, but they just haven't connected with school, haven't thrived in school as they would like to before they come into Project 79. One of the great things about this series is that our partners at the NJEA actually produced these terrific three-minute videos that um, really set a context for our discussion afterwards, and it paints a picture that's a lot better than I could describe. We'll see the video, and then we'll talk more with Peter. Let's take a look at Classroom Close-Up. All right, guys, that's homeroom. Come on, bring it inside. Let's, let's do it. An alternative education program in Westfield is helping high school students discover themselves as learners by combining rigorous academics with individualized instruction. Project 79 is an alternate form of learning where they bring up the question, like, is there a way that we can get kids who aren't doing well in mainstream, and instead of just giving up on them, putting them in an environment where they can succeed and do better. Project 79 exists because there was a superintendent of schools way back in 1978 who, who just had on his radar, way on the side of his radar, the idea that there was a group of kids that we were in danger of losing. His name was Larry Green. And so he had this idea that maybe with the right group of teachers, he might be able to offer something to kids that would make school feel more meaningful and make them want to be here. Project 79 is a college preparatory curriculum, so project students take the same subjects at the same levels as students not in the program. The difference is the teaching. One of our purposes is to try to you know, have each kid figure out how to use the unique equipment that's between his or her ears. You know, I mean, everybody looks at things differently. Everybody's got a different mind. So to get a sense of your learning style, we are a little bit more hands-on and we can be a little bit more individually responsive because of the size of the classes, but also because of the nature of the activities and projects that we take on. It's the way school should be done. I thought it was really cool because the classes are really small and the teachers concentrate on you better than they did in mainstream. And you're more like involved and you play more engaging games that get you interested in what you're learning. I just moved to Westfield as a freshman. It was very difficult for me to fit in. I was struggling with most of my classes, not because I couldn't understand it, but just because I felt different and I didn't want to be there. So I came into Project and immediately I started paying more attention. I had friends to talk to and my grades have gone from very low to straight A's right now. The highly collaborative approach Project 79's small team of teachers is able to take with the approximately 120 students who choose to participate in the program has led to more than three decades of success and the program becoming a model for alternative education throughout the region. I think that if Project was never presented with me, there's no way I would be 
going to the school I am today or I would have nearly the, as many friends that I have now and it really, it completely changed my life. One of the ways that I think about the students in this program, um, and it's not an image that I, you know, came up with, but I, I think of them as orchids, that, you know, this is the most stunning uh, and varied um, flower on earth, but it needs the right conditions, you know, in order to amaze you. If you provide the right conditions for our kids, they will continue to amaze us. What a great program. Thank you. How proud are you? It's powerful to see that. I'm, I'm very much, um, I'm addressed. I'm addressed. It's something, you know, I work in the program every day. This is my 11th year um, that I'll be working in Project 79. Describe your role there. Uh, I am the uh, English teacher for juniors and seniors, but I'm also the coordinator of the program, which I see as uh, the very fortunate role of kind of brokering the vision um, with, that we work together as a team of teachers and also getting lots of impact uh, uh, feedback from students and parents as well about the kinds of things we need to be doing, the directions we need to be going in. But I the other teachers, mm -hmm. are we talking certain kinds of teachers? Sure. Who are they? I mean, are they? Sure. Well, they're, they're, they're people who, are, who come from the different disciplines and they're great teachers in terms of content area, but really what we look for um, because we have a, a, a program that delivers the major subject areas, but also we have a teaching artist in residence, um, for example, to connect along uh, some of the other modes of expression. People who are not just good uh, as a chemistry teacher, for example, being all over it there, but also um, consistently demonstrate that willingness and uh, eagerness to get to know the whole student and to see that. What does that mean? Eagerness it, to get to know it means whole to, to recognize that you are not just the person in front of me for 42 minutes that I'm assigning English work to or having the conversations with, that you have this whole life uh, and interests, which may not include English, actually, outside yeah. the classroom. But I have to, you know, to try to understand that a little bit um, and to recognize that, that part of what I want to do is to figure out a way to present some of the magic and come a little bit closer to you, you for know, the discipline. Uh, yeah. Sorry for interrupting, Peter. You right. interested in me. Uh, you went to Princeton University. Yes, sir. You come back to teach, right? Yeah. Do you ever get some of your friends, I'm not saying from Princeton, I hate when someone says your Ivy League friends, right? Sure. I'm a Rutgers guy, so we can't say that. It's all right. Even though we like to believe we're part of the Ivy League in our own minds, right? Whatever that means. Um, do you ever get any of your friends who really don't understand the teaching profession and the impact that you really, really have on these young people and the ability that you have to change their minds, asking, what are you doing? Do you ever get sure, that? Sure, sure. We understand the question. I actually, I, I don't get it as often as, as, as people might think. And, and I think part of the reason is that um, the people I have those conversations with most often, you know, if when, when we're honest about it, whoever we are, we can always recognize that there are teachers who have made tremendous difference, you know, in, in our lives. Um, and whether you're going to grow up to be a governor uh, or a head of a corporation or a shop owner, um, you recognize that it was somebody, probably, uh, who took you seriously and saw you as a whole person who helped you along the path to wherever it is that you're going. Um, and of course, it's very important when we're looking at the future as we are now, where the kinds of jobs that people will be doing haven't even been made yet. You know, so the people who are going to cultivate those minds uh, people who are going to take them seriously are more as as important as ever. Listen, there are whole kinds of all kinds of questions I could ask you more about the curriculum and the sure. details of the program, but I'm not going to. I'm more interested in in you and your attitude about being a teacher. Question. Mm -hmm. Final question before I let you out of here. How much passion do you feel today after teaching for how many years again? This is going to be my 16th year. How much passion do you feel today compared to the day you started? It's, it's tremendous. It's, it's, it's work that's different every day, um, and I believe that. So it's, that it's absolutely undiminished. At this point right now, I am really embracing this role that I have to be able to lead, to be a teacher leader, as well as teacher, and that's part of what keeps it interesting. Um, but I believe that every teacher you know, has that capacity, and that's part of why I'm so fortunate to be able to work in the program with the colleagues that I have um, because they recognize that each of us has tremendous capacity to make a difference. We're very fortunate to have you. Thanks, Steve. Keep it up. Appreciate Peter it. Peter Horn, as uh, Project 79.
coordinator at Westfield High School, part of our classroom close-up series uh, done in cooperation with our friends at the NJEA. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. We'll be right back right after this. If you would like more information on this program or if you'd like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org, visit us online at oneonone.org, or find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD. There she is, Teacher of the Year, 2010-2011, Danielle Kovach from Tulsa Trail Elementary School in Sussex County, New Jersey. How are you doing? Great. I'm doing great. How are you? Now listen, you were the Teacher of the Year, 2010. Were you surprised when that happened? Uh, extremely surprised. You didn't see it coming? Nope. How did they tell you? Um, believe it or not, the Commissioner of Education called me at my school. And um, it was a conference call with my principal and my superintendent. I truly, honestly thought I was in trouble for something. I was going to ask if you thought you were in trouble. You know, to get called to the principal's office is usually, you know, <laughs> not, a, not a great thing. But I got called to the principal's office, and I saw my superintendent sitting there, and we were waiting for a phone call. All I was told was, oh we're God. waiting for a call. My heart was beating. They I, tricked you. Set you they up. They set me up. As soon they as you heard, me. did your heart drop? My heart, uh, yes, my heart dropped. I think my jaw dropped, um, <laughs> and the tears started flowing. And, Good for um, you. Yes, it was um, certainly a moment I will never forget. Now, you're a special ed teacher. Yes. Why did you go into special ed? Well, when I was a junior in high school, I volunteered at a camp for students with special needs. I had always known, always knew that I wanted to be a teacher. Always? Um, always. Ever Far back as? I was a little girl in elementary school. I would, I kid you not, I would come home from school, I would take all of my dolls and stuffed animals, I would line them up alphabetically no on way. my bed, mm -hmm, and I would pretend to teach to my students. I would wear my mother's high heel shoes, because <laughs> the teacher that I was w pretending to be would wear high heel of shoes. Of course. And um, my closet was my chalkboard, and I would pretend to teach to my stuffed animals. And I knew I wanted to be a teacher. Well, and then when's the special ed piece come in? Well, I had an opportunity to volunteer at a camp for students with special needs. And it was there that I, I saw why they're special in special education. Uh, you ready? To, sorry for interrupting. Have you seen the piece? This classroom close up piece? Yes. Guys, can we get ready to show the clip? We're going to show the clip, and after we show the clip, we'll talk some more. I, just, I got so caught up in talking to you, I forgot we had the clip. <laughs> Let's go to the classroom close up okay. clip from our partners at the New Jersey. Education Association, and we'll talk to the Teacher of the Year again. Come on, let's go take a tour in the school classroom. Come on! Guys, come on in. First of all, there is no typical day in a classroom. Children are children. They're very unpredictable. However, they're just a thrill to be with every day. The compound word is... Two, two words put together to make one new word. Very good. When we knew we were shooting a segment for Classroom Close-Up, I was asked what I wanted to showcase in my classroom. I decided to turn it over to my students and ask them, if you want everyone to see our room, what would you want them to know? What would you want them to see? We took a vote on it, and what they decided was they wanted everyone to know how difficult it is for them to learn things and how we overcome those challenges, how we use different materials, different ways to go about their learning so that way they are successful and they do feel successful with what they do. Boys and girls, what is a noun? What I like to do in my classroom is to appeal to all of the students' senses, hearing, seeing, doing, feeling, touching, so that way they incorporate their learning into everything around them and helps them to become better learners. A noun. A noun. Very good. Jets is a name. Is Jets, the Jets that I have up on the board, is that a common noun or a proper noun? Proper noun. It's important to have technology in our classroom because that's the way our world is. I think that technology sh does not replace, nor it should replace, traditional methods of teaching, such as writing, doing basic pen and paper math, but technology should enhance their learning and really give them another avenue to learn. We do have our smart board that we use every day. We also have computers in our classroom. My class does podcasts. We have Twitter. We also have a classroom website that I have a blog that I connect with the parents with. 
Um, and that website is also a vehicle of communication between, not only between our classroom and the parents, but also our classroom and anyone else who wants to see what we're doing in our class. For my students, I hope that they realize that whatever goals, whatever dreams, whatever it is they want to pursue in life, is that they can. That they have the ability, they have the power to control their own destiny and whatever it is that they set their mind to do, they can. Now you're a big baby. <laughs> you are a big baby. I am a big baby. I am. <laughs> How come you get emotional when you see that? I'm teasing, you're not a big baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, uh, to see that video you again. You love those kids. All my heart. No, all I my mean, heart. really, I know you have your own kids. Three sons? Yes, three boys. Four, seven, and 11? Yes. I know you love your kids, but you love these kids. I do. How come? <sighs> you know, they inspire me every day. They come into school with so many challenges, so many obstacles, so many barriers. And every day they come in ready to face the world, ready to tackle those challenges. And a lot of times they can overcome them. And it's such an inspiration to me. Um, it's such a privilege and an honor for me to see, see that learning take place every day. Um, the, the clip that you saw, those were my kids from last year. Mm. And you know, it's so hard at the end of the year to, to let go. Um, to, to have them move on to the next grade and um, to see them again, you know, it just brings me back to them. And, and I always, always wonder about all of my students, you know, how they're doing. And, and um, you know, it's great to hear back from my students year after year. And, and quite honestly, I, I am a worrywart for them. So um, to see them again on video really, you know, brought back some great memories. You know, Dan Danielle, people use the term special ed, yes. you know, kids in special ed. And it gets classified, categorized. Mm -hmm. But it means something very special to you. They're, they're each individual, young men and women, boys and girls. Yes. You don't categorize them at all, do you? No, it's not about their disability, it's their possibilities. What do you mean? When they're in my room, we don't focus on what they can't do. We focus on what they can do. Um, focusing on the positive and coming up with ways to help them succeed, help them feel good about themselves. It's not about their disability. It's about me bringing out and helping them to see their possibilities because their world is, is their possibility. They have a universe of possibilities and that's actually the, the theme for our room and I have it hanging up on the classroom wall. Finally, I know it's great to be the teacher of the year, yeah. you know, accolades are great, but you never got into it for that. You never. Know? What would you say to all of your colleagues as we celebrate and recognize uh, educators across this state and this nation this week? What would you say to your colleagues? I would say that every teacher in New Jersey knows that the, they make a difference in education, that they impact every single life they come in contact with, and there is nothing that anyone can say or do to take that away from them. We're proud of you, Danielle. Thank you. Keep it up. Thank you. Great job. If you would like more information on this program or if you'd like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org, visit us online at oneonone.org, or find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD. Carl Body is a music teacher at the Frank R. Conwell Middle School Number four in Jersey City, I got that all in. He is a guitarist, but more importantly, he is a fabulous music teacher and part of our Classroom Close-Up series. We do in cooperation with our colleagues at the New Jersey Education Association. You're about to see a video clip. Um, this is part of a program that is funded through VH1, the Save the Music Foundation. What did the money go to? Well, the money purchased 16 Casio keyboards that were put in a classroom and they were hooked up to an intercom system with a master control where I'm able to uh, instruct the kids on a one-to-one -one, uh, basis. Is with this headphones. the keyboard band? This, the, this is part of the keyboard. This is what became the keyboard the band. The keyboard band, Keyboard right? band is drawn from this, this class. Right. So I teach these classes all day long. It's general music. 
and I'm a, I, because I'm wearing headphones and a, and a head, headphones and a mic, I can talk to the kids one on one. It's really nice. You've been teaching music for how long? Twenty years. Love it. I do. Passion. I love Haven't it. Haven't lost it's, it. Nope. See, teachers Every are day. great. Listen, uh, Carl and his colleagues are involved in a terrific program, and uh, you're about to see a um, terrific piece of video from Classroom Close Up. The money again comes from VH1, the Save the Music Foundation. Let's talk to uh, Carl right after we look at a great piece of video. Okay, let's, let, me, let me hear what you guys, I know you worked a little on your own on this. Let's just hear the intro. This is a little something that we're going to be doing. We're working on this as an original, right? Here we go, let's hear it. Let's hear it, let's just hear what you got. Let's hear it. All schools teach math, language arts, but not everybody's going to become a physics major. Other kids are artistic, other kids can do dance, they play music, so it's important to provide a, a medium for them to do this from. Okay, all right, good, that's nice. Now, the VH1 Save the Music Foundation came to us uh, a year ago in s September and donated a 16 keyboard lab. Fuck! 16 Casio keyboards and then a whole intercom system with a teacher console. And we do mostly piano lessons in that class. We give them piano books and they learn how to play, read music and play the piano. Keyboard labs are great because it gives the teacher a lot of versatility in terms of being able to involve the entire class or just work with one student or two students, have them work together. It's really great. The keyboard band is an outgrowth, actually, of that lab. I find the players uh, in the keyboard lab, kids with talent and, and desire, and we put together the group and we perform. The best part about being in the keyboard band is being able to express my musical talents and um, perform in front of a live audience and just, you know, telling people that you can do it too if you just, you know, try. Music doesn't just come out of nowhere. It takes a lot of effort and practice. We work every day of the week and every day we progress and, you know, it helps a lot. Says that you are whoever you hang out with. So I changed because I used to hang out with those kids that want to be cool and everything. And then when I joined the keyboard band, my grades improved. It gave me more confidence because before I was like, no way, I'm not going on stage to do that speech. And now I'm like, it's okay, it's just an audience, it's not tigers. I think it's great because we get to spread the joy of being able to play music. I think it's such a gift to be able to play music to express yourself freely. I think everybody understands that well-rounded person needs to have an appreciation of the arts and music, drama, you know, the, the visual arts all add to that. The look of pride on your face, what do you see in those kids? I see hard-working kids who are dedicated, understand teamwork, and who are just a really high quality group of kids. But, but are they natural born musicians or <laughs> is it no. is it like, hey, let's find no. these kids who are naturals? No, no, no. Well, they, they have the interest. They? they have interest. They want to do something. I think it's with any of the arts it probably goes to, but in this particular case, it's music. They have an interest. They're, as I said, they're willing to work hard. Right. They make a commitment. They understand teamwork and they just stick to it and they work through the challenges. What does it do for them? I saw the one young man who said it keeps me out of trouble, another mm -hmm. one who said I'm more confident about speaking. I mean, I'm thinking the self-esteem, the confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Am I oh, making too much uh, of that? No, not at all. I've had teachers in, in our building come up to me and say that this a certain student maybe was a little bit anxious about talking in front of the class, a book report or something, and now by the end of the year the person's up there making the the lecture and confident and I, I've, I've seen the kids really grow with confidence as we've done all of our performances. Let me ask you for you, you've been out teaching two decades, right? You've been a musician for a few years, right? Mm -hmm. Before that. What does it do for you when a program like this 
kicks off. And again, hats off to VH1 for stepping up and doing this. I mean, that's a big deal. Philanthropy in the corporate world, when you do that, it's important. Um, what does it do for you? How does it energize you? Well, it energizes me to keep going through whatever problems I face on a daily basis. Uh, uh, it also, um, I'm, I'm just very proud of how they work, uh, what the kids do. Uh, it's, what, you know, what it's what a day-to-day -day thing. thing. What, what would happen? Hey, people say, you know what, that's nice, but come on, music, that's not a priority. Right, well, we get that. We get a lot of that, and hopefully people will see a video like this and watch your show and understand that the confidence that the kids are getting, the understanding of, uh, you know, getting, staying out of trouble and commitment. And it, it, hopefully, it's not just music. Oh, no, no, not at all. It's, that's, that's just the vehicle that's used to have the kids grow in all these areas. That, that's really what I look for also, just that personal growth that they make to combat the problems we all face in life. And your colleagues, the reaction? Uh, they're very supportive at my school, Con Frank R. Conwell, very supportive. Our principal's very supportive. Uh, they're very, they're proud of us. They're very happy for us. Mm. And it's just, it's, it's a very nice atmosphere. Carl, I ask every one of your colleagues who come in as part of this classroom close-up initiative that we do with the NJEA, the same question. I'm going to ask you 20 seconds. How much do you love what you do? On a 1 to 10? Yeah, 1 to 10, go. Uh, 11. Come on, Like the stop. Marshall Amplifier, it's an 11. Yeah, I absolutely love it every day. I have my bad days, but you know, when I who go doesn't? to school on a bad day and I look 11. into those little faces, I'm really, I, it brings me right up. I'll take 11 any day of the week. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, Wells Fargo, the Adler Aphasia Center, PSENG, the law firm of Gibbons PC, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, Bloomfield College. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System. When you work in a public school, you're a part of the community. So when Superstorm Sandy hit, the school employees jump right in to help. The middle school here served as a refuge for people who were forced from their homes. We all pitched in to help. Custodians, cafeteria workers, teacher aides, mechanics, groundskeepers, all pitching in to help out. School employees are part of a team, whether it's to help educate our children or to recover from a terrible tragedy. That's why I'm so proud to be a member of the NJEA.